Hey everyone, Obsessive Prepper AZ. I am going to do a double batch of peanut brittle and I figured I would take you along and uh, show you what I uh, do for uh, peanut brittle. So anyways, I'm going to do a double batch like I said. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out with four cups of sugar, a half a stick of butter, which is a half a cup of butter, and then I'm going to also need two cups of uh, carol syrup. Whoop! And I, I forgot I had water in there, but I'd already pre measured it. And a cup of water. So I'm going to put a little bit more in there because I had spilled some. So uh, that was a cup of water. And I'm going to need two cups of carol syrup. One cup. Some people spray um, oil into the uh, measuring cup so that the carrot syrup comes out easier. I don't mess with it. I figured if anything I'll give it an extra splash to have the uh, amount that I need. So that's my two cups. And then I'm almost out of carrot syrup so I'm just going to put the rest of it in. It doesn't make a difference if you have just a little bit extra. So uh, I'm going to get this up to, to speed here. So uh, it's going to get to the point that um, it's going to start caramelizing. Let me get this in the sink here. And uh, what you're going to do is you're going to cook it until it comes to 275 degrees. That's when you're going to start seeing like the golden color and it's when it starts getting that um, um, soft crack stage. So uh, I'm going to mix this and cook it. Once it gets closer to um, the point where I need to uh, add the uh, baking soda and the nuts, I'll bring you back. I'm going to see if I can't get a... Okay, so we're at about 230, almost 240 degrees here. Um, I can see if I can get there at the softball uh, stage. Now we've got to get to 275. Now on a lot of recipes they'll tell you to put your nuts in at 275 and cook to 295. I have found that by doing that I have a tendency of burning my nuts for some reason. So I am not going to add my nuts until I'm almost at 290 degrees. Um, and then this is where we're at. So it's going to take a few more minutes and then once I get to that point I'll bring you back. Okie doke. I forgot to also uh, mention that I had added a teaspoon of salt to my mixture. Now I'm at 290 degrees right now. So what I'm going to do is I am going to pour my nuts in. And like I said, you want to get it to 295 degrees, but I have a tendency of burning my nuts when I go any higher with it. So, uh, I mean, excuse me, because it said to do it at 275. So, uh, and then also when you add your nuts, it's going to seize up some because your nuts are cooler than your uh, mixture. So it seizes up a little bit, but what you do is you stir it down, and I use a lot of nuts. I love nuts in my peanut brittle, and I don't know if you can see the mixture or not. Let's see. There you go. So I'm going to cook it until it's 295 degrees, and then once it's 295, get it back off there a little bit, once it gets to 295 degrees, then I will add my baking soda to it. So that dropped my temperature down. I was already at 290 degrees, and by adding the nuts, it dropped my temperature down to 280 degrees. So now it's got to build back up. And see, like I said, if you start at 275, I, I just have a tendency to burning the nuts because I'm cooking it long. So uh, the only thing you could possibly do is maybe add um, your nuts, um, heat them up in the oven or in your frying pan uh, first. Not, not too hot, but at least to the point where you, it's not so cold and it seizes your mixture up. So that's the only thing that I would probably recommend to do versus pouring them in cold. But this is what I did, so. And the one thing you also want is your thermometer to have 
um, the back on it. I don't know what happened to my, th my thermometer. Between my kids and my husband getting in and out of my drawers, I've lost the back of my thermometer to hold it to the, uh, the pan. So that's something I'm going to have to either figure out, buy another one. But they cost, your, your candy thermometers are so expensive. I think what I'm going to do is just figure out a way to, to wire it on. Or eventually go out and buy me one. So I am at 280 degrees right now. And like I said, you're going to, at this point, you want to keep this stirred. Because if you don't, you're cooking at such a high temperature that you are going to uh, burn your nuts down at the bottom of it. So, we're at 290 degrees right now. Almost there. It smells so good. Now I pulled two cookie sheets out. I think I'm going to only just use one cookie sheet. I like mine a little bit thick. I've had peanut brittle where it's super uh, thin and I don't care for that. I like it a little bit thicker. And something I also did here is I added, um, excuse me, added, I put my uh, pan on my burner and I've got my burners on low because that's another thing is when you dump it onto the uh, burner I mean, excuse me into the pan it seizes up because your pans are cold so uh, I went ahead and I've got my pan sitting on my uh, burners here just I'm not super hot just enough to uh, keep it warm so it doesn't seize up when I pour it I am at 300 degrees right now so I'm actually five degrees high, hotter than I should be, but uh, not a problem. All right, so what's going to happen is once it gets to this hot um, 290 degrees, 300, you're going to turn off your burner, and when you turn off your burner, this is when you're going to add your baking soda. And I don't know if you can see, it's pretty uh, just syrupy candy right now. Once you add your baking soda, this is what makes it all foam up. This is what puts your air in your uh, peanut brittle and gets it going. So, mix it all in. Get my pot holder here. See how it's, it's transforming into a, just a big foaming mess. So you wanna make sure that you get your uh, baking soda blend it in, but you don't want to break down your peanut brittle too much that you're taking all the air out from the baking soda. So uh, I'm going to put this to the side, and I hope I've got it here. Let me see if I can't get this a little higher so you can see what I'm doing with the, uh, the pans. Bear with me. I just got this new camera and this tripod, and uh, I'm not exactly an expert at using it. So, whoa, my pan is about ready to boil over here. Okay, I might need that other pan. Okay, so there's one. And I'm going to push this off to the side and get my other pan. And you really, really want to be careful when you're doing this because it will burn the heck out of you. It's such a beautiful golden color. Alrighty. Let me get this out of the way. And then because my pan is heated, I'm going to turn my stove off. Oh, stop that. It's foaming over the top under my burner and that's what you're seeing burn right now but I'm not too worried about that I don't care about a little bit of smoke not unless it's on fire so that's what we've got here and then I had a little extra that I could put in another pan and so anyways, um, I'm gonna bring you back when this all cools down and then I will crack it down and uh, show you how my uh, 
brittle turned all righty so it's cooled down for about 15 minutes it doesn't really take that long to cool down um, I put it outside. I love winter time when you're cooking candies and, and baking stuff. It's kind of like in the olden days where the pie was in the window. I just don't have anybody stealing my pies like Yogi Bear. <laughs> Anyways, um, candy's hard now. It's like I said, 15 minutes. And what you're going to do is all you've got to do is crack it. This one was pretty easy. Just loose. So you can either do thin pieces like this or you can do thicker pieces. Um, sorry about that. Like I said, it's the first time I've ever used this camera, so I don't know exactly uh, how to use it. I promise you I will get better. So what you're going to do is just crack it to whatever uh, size pieces you want. Now this one here is a bigger piece, and I'm going to have to uh, there you go, pull it out. And so you've got thicker pieces. And, and, and everybody, there's, everybody has their own preference of what uh, thickness that they want to give. I've had real thin pieces, thick pieces. I think probably this thickness is probably the best, so you probably want to use um, the full two trays. Um, I hope you all enjoy the video. I am getting ready to have my lashes done, and my uh, lash gal, I'm going to give this to her. I didn't get to see her over the Christmas holidays, so this is going to be my new year's gift to my lash gal. So uh, if you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to uh, post it to me, and uh, you all have a blessed new year.